Hey guys, it's Anne. Welcome to the channel. Today we are going to look in on three experiments. We are going to look in on my Eat My Shirt, and then after that we're going to look at the Eat The Jeans, and then after that we're going to look at Bin 101. Alright, so starting at the Eat My Shirt Bin. This is actually 250 days of shirt eating going on in here. Now, we still have two shirts going on as far as I can remember from watching the videos and one of them was 100% cotton and one was poly and being that this one is hard to say what's what but they were fed rice and things last time so it might have kind of crusted over during vacation I did water it but you never know what you're gonna get uh oh looks like we may have missed the missed the party here it looks as though the one shirt that was 100% cotton, cotton is 100% gone now. Look at that. Looks like a snakeskin, doesn't it? Okay, we will remove that and kind of slide over. Well, here's a, maybe a little bit of the fabric left here. So that shirt was 150 days. So if you want to know how long it takes a pound of worms to eat a cotton shirt, it takes 150 days or at least my worms and my shirts. Now, the next story is what is appearing to be a poly blend shirt. And this has been in there for 120 days. And I'm starting to wonder if this is cotton at all, considering they ate a reasonably intact shirt um, in another 30 days. This shirt doesn't appear to be going any, well, you can kind of hear it, can you? Maybe a little? I don't know. Well, we'll keep at it. Um, we'll give it another couple of months. If it doesn't make any progress, then we might have to call it that it was actually a poly shirt and not a cotton poly. All right. Well, let's put that in there and see if there's any other hard bits. Now, the last time we fed them, they got some onions and some rice reasonably fast food so I would not expect to see any of that left looks like they are still working on the avocado pits from way way in the past still and going through all of this it's it's looking like maybe I want to start a migration on this and uh, start over because really this is getting very very well worked over um, but I am going to get them a new pair of clothes. Um, don't you love it when your family just finally hops on board with what you're doing here? And uh, my son brought me a pair of shorts and he said, will they eat Dockers? Sure, I guess. We'll find out. So let me go get his shorts. So we're literally going to do an eat my shorts. Makes me proud. Okay, now according to the label here, it is 100% cotton exclusive of decoration made in Bangladesh. So, with the exception of these zippers, I think, in theory, they should be able to eat 100% of these shorts. All right, well, let's make room. I should probably get these wet first, right? Right. All right, so. There we go. They just got dipped in some water. They're also going to get some food. So let's get them some food over here to entice everybody to move over. Okay, so one of the casualties of the vacation taking too long was the shopping. And so a bunch of baby carrots um, got abandoned and, and got slimy. Don't you hate that? Um, but I'm also going to get them some bedding to get them to come over here too. They don't just have shirts and shorts for bedding. They do get normal paper bedding that I have for the rest of my bins. So let me get them a little extra bedding. Because I think that this bin, at least this portion here, is going to be ready to harvest very quickly. So I'm going to pad that up and kind of stretch this out. Maybe it'll dry out a little bit. Um, and then all the worms can move over to the clothing and then we can harvest this and start all over and it'll be super awesome again. All right, give me a second. I'm gonna go get the blue jeans. So here we are with the blue jeans. Like I said, I did throw water on these when I got in because it was 
really getting clumpy and hard as a rock, which finished castings do kind of do that if they dry out a lot. So I'm going to kind of check the side that doesn't have the blue jeans to see how they're doing. And this bin might still might be in the same position as the shirt bin and might be getting ready uh, to migrate because these castings look great, don't they? That is that is beautiful. All right, so let me get something to pull all of the the dry stuff off so we can make sure that gets underneath. Don't really want that to get mixed in with my almost finished castings over here. Kind of try and scrape off the jeans. Now these jeans were also donated by my son. And so we'll see. Looks like a bit of paper towel there. We'll see what the blue jeans are doing. Oh wow. Look wow. Um I'm starting to think we could get like a lot of money for these. Look at how many holes. You think that could ever be a thing? Like Instead of uh, tie-dyed or bleached blue jeans, it could be partially deconstructed blue jeans uh, or environmentally deconstructed blue jeans. Look at that. They ate, they ate the booty out. Still working on this side of the booty. Okay, so you can see that they're starting to look like a feather boa and not blue jeans here. Well, that's pretty awesome. Good job, worms. Look at you guys. Good job. All right, let's see what's underneath here. Mm, got some peanut shells. Let's stack all that up over here. And then I think we should do the same thing as we're doing with the eat my shirt bin and get some new cat or get some new bedding over here and uh, start migrating so we can harvest these castings pretty soon. I know it's only July something, but pretty soon it's going to be time for fall vegetables and we'll need some new. But look at how dark these castings are. Something about the blue jeans seems to be kind of leaf-ish in making the casting super dark. Interesting. All right, let me grab some bedding and some food. All right. So I'm going to put the, you know, as much real estate as I can there, and then we're going to get them some pretty squishy food so that it gets into all the cracks and crevices of the blue jeans. All right, CC goo to the rescue. Uh, this is kind of deconstructed pasta and nuts. Um, so that should... It's not rotten or anything. I just got it wet and then froze it, hoping that it would uh, make it more edible for the worms. Because um, obviously crunchy, crunchy pasta and stuff is not really easily usable by the worms. Okay, put in the old stuff there. And then I guess I'll have to rescue some of the, you know, use some of this to cover it up because we don't want the the critters in the basement if there are any to decide they wanted to get into that all right hang on one more experiment let me go get the 101 bin okay this bin is just my usual starter bin that I've been having people follow along with um, last time we did the five things to make your life less stressed out with worms um, this bin was covered up pretty tightly with bubble wrap while I was gone, so it really stayed a pretty decent moisture. Yeah, looks like the, the castings from just the paper is actually really kind of like a milk chocolate color. It's interesting how, you know, if there's no leaves or anything, you know, it stays like a very pale color. But this bin's been doing really well. The temperature's been about 75 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit in the basement, so the worms have really had their best uh, best moisture going on here. No, I don't. I'm, I'm gonna have to say no, guys. I know you're growing, but no. Um, so this time, these worms have been on their own 
for about 40 days. And we did have the, enough food for them to uh, have some left over when we got back. So there's still some potato in there. They had chow last time, but it looks like with that amount of bedding, they did just fine for a whole month. So let's get them some new food and maybe a little bit more bedding just so they have someplace interesting to go. Okay, so there is, all right, so there is some bedding and then let's get them some food. All right, so you got some radishes that have gone bad. And because that is, uh, those will be stinky if I don't bury them really, really well. So we are going to get them, make sure they're at the bottom. Now I've not, I don't know if I've fed just whole radishes before. If you have, let me know. Um, I'm guessing it'll be a slow food, but because it was in the bottom of the fridge and had started to get a little slimy and moldy, you know, maybe it will speed up just a little bit. I'm not sure. Um, so just in case, let's give them a little bit of uh, worm chow, just in case those radishes uh, take longer than expected to start breaking down. I don't want the worms to do, do without. You know, and that's, that's one of the things that I can continue to talk about when, you know, starting your worm bins, you have to kind of uh, hedge your bets. And if you're busy and you may not get into it very often, try and make sure that the worms have slow food and fast food to get into so that they don't do without when you're busy. And that's just what I'm doing right there. I'm giving them about a quarter cup per this one pound of mixed worms so that basically, you know, they won't do without if I get busy again. I doubt that I'll get as busy as I was before, but here we are. So they've got all their little bin critters to help them. And so that has been 101. All right, guys. Well, if you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. I do have playlists for my experiments, and I can link that right over there. And YouTube thinks that you're going to want to see this video next. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.